Well, hello, everybody. It's time again here at Corner Post Cowboy Church. I'd like to welcome you guys and invite you to join us for a little bit as we do some music and then hear what Pastor Mike has to share with us tonight. And uh, anyways, it's, uh, it's mighty lonesome in this empty building. Uh, and I'm excited for the day where we can all meet back in here again. I'm getting kind of tired of, of uh, this whole thing of not being able to gather together and because uh, I miss your smiling faces. So anyways, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and kick things off with some music. Judy's going to go ahead and open in prayer, and uh, then we'll see what falls out. Well, good evening. Let's, uh, let's go to the Lord. Father, we just uh, say good evening and that we love you. We invite you in. Lord, we ask for your presence to be here in this place. Lord, you're anointing on the message and on the word tonight that you would have us here. Lord, we ask for open ears and hearts to receive it and that it would be planted deep and it would bear fruit in our, our lives, Lord. And we just thank you for it. We thank you that you love us. And we do love you. So we just say welcome. We praise you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You know, I am so very, very thankful, me personally, that God loves me in spite of me. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't deserve it, uh, but he loves me anyways. And he, and he tells me that, and uh, uh, I'm just, I'm blessed, and I'm thankful, and I'm, and I'm grateful, so. Yeah. I know I don't deserve his love. I don't deserve his grace And I don't deserve the blessings He gives me every day I know I don't deserve a home With the angels see If you ask me how I feel This is what I'll say I'll take it anyway What well, Jesus said it was mine Father gladly gave. Don't try to understand it all. I'll take it anyway. I know I don't deserve this peace that I feel inside. On my pillow at night I know I don't deserve a smile Oh, that's on my face But the only way I can explain it Is amazing grace I'll take it anyway Well, Jesus said it was mine I couldn't make it on my own That's why he paid the price I'll ever need the Father gladly gave. Though I don't understand it all, I'll take it anyway. Though I don't understand it all, I'll take it anyway. Join us if you know it. Clap your hands. <laughs> when the, the trumpet, trumpet of the Lord shall sound and time shall be no and the morning breaks eternal bright and fair, and the saved of earth shall gather over on the other shore, and the road is called up yonder.
person on this planet is going to stand before God. Yeah. Every person, right. every person is going to stand before an almighty God. And he's going to ask one question of us all, I believe. And he's going to ask, what did you do with my son? Mm -hmm. What did you do with him? Did you hide him under a pillow? Or did you put him out on a, on a table to be seen by all the the Bible tells us, Jesus said, that if I be lifted up, yeah. I would draw all men unto me. That's right. What have you done with Jesus? Have you lifted him up in the way you live your life, how you walk, how you talk? Yeah. Do, you, do, you, do you spend time with him? And if you did, my Bible tells me that he's going to look at me and he's going to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. I am looking forward to that day when he says to me, well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. Where are we at? Well done, my good and faithful servant. Well done, my good and faithful servant. The words I long to hear on that special day. As I humbly kneel at his throne, you fought my I'm looking forward to the day 
God bless you. Pastor, we are done. Finished. All right. Thank you, guys. Amen. And Amen. somebody out there is going, praise God. <laughs> Amen. Appreciate you guys. As always, thankful for Brother Gary and Sister Judy coming and uh, doing her music. Even before we had to just be us in here, so they had uh, volunteered. I appreciate that uh, so much. Well, good evening, everybody. Hope that you've had a good Monday. Uh, doesn't matter whether we have or not, God's still good despite our circumstance or our uh, storm or problem or tribulation, whatever you want to call it, uh, that we're going through. So uh, we're on the countdown, June 7th, uh, the first Sunday in June. We will be back uh, in our building, and uh, so we'll start having church uh, back like we had it. Uh, so... Uh, We'll be in the parking lot two more Sundays, and then we will be back in here on Sunday, June 7th. We'll be back in here then on Monday nights uh, and Wednesday nights. So we will have a uh, statement we'll push out on our app and Facebook pages and all that, letting everybody know that probably next week. Uh, so I've got some announcements. I'll do them at the end uh, of the service. So uh, if you have your Bibles, we will be in uh, 1 Peter uh, chapter 1. And we're going to go through this uh, little short letter uh, to the church. So we went through First John, and we're going to go through First and Second Peter uh, oh, on Mondays and Wednesday nights. So uh, if you're on Corner Post, or if you just switched over from Corner Post, or if you got a friend on Corner Post, we're running everything through Crossroads right now due to the fact that uh, that's what our camera and everything set up here on the church. And my wife's not here uh, on my phone or her phone. Uh, going to corner posts so you can tell your friends or catch that everything will be on Crossroads uh, Community Church Facebook page and you can catch it there if you miss it you can tune in later tonight tomorrow the next day whenever and watch it it will be on there click on it uh, and watch it again don't forget about our YouTube page I believe we hit 100 didn't we Doug so but we'll still take more please get over there and subscribe to it and get on that and watch this you can see it on YouTube as well and I'll talk more about that uh, at the end of the service. So I want to get on uh, with the word tonight. Uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 1. Uh, it says, This letter is from Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, so we know who it's from, and that it is the apostle Peter. Uh, he said, I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners in the provinces of Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia. He said, I'm writing to you there uh, he said, and, and the thing we have to remember here is we are in that they were Roman provinces in what is now modern day Turkey, uh, but it's just like us. We're still foreigners here, even though I'm an American citizen, born in America, born in Oklahoma, just right down the road a few miles and drum ride is where my mother birthed me. Uh, and I'm here and been here, been around a little bit, but uh, so I'm an Okie, so anyhow, but I am a foreigner here. I'm just passing through. My true citizenship is in heaven and I'm thankful for Jesus Christ and his blood, as Brother Gary shared uh, during the music, that, man, I, I'm, I'm not uh, anything other than grateful, eternally thankful that Jesus died for me and that I do have eternal life. But not only do I have eternal life, I have the power of the Word of God at my uh, disposal. I have the Holy Spirit living in me, and I can walk and talk and do all the things that my Father says I can have according to his Word, and I'm very thankful for that. Uh, and it says, God the Father, verse 2, knew you and chose you long ago, and his spirit uh, has made you holy. Now, he says, as a result, you have obeyed him and have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. May God give you more and more grace and peace. And I hope that you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. There's no other cleansing agent. We've had the building sanitized and, and do that. We have a company coming in and spraying the chairs and all that stuff down and uh, everything the, the best that we can. We've got an air scrubber coming we're going to install uh, in our air conditioning systems and things like that. We've got hand sanitizer uh, at your disposal and things like that that we can try to 
cleanse if you have any uh, virus or whatever on your hands and that. But I'm going to tell you, there's no hand sanitizer, there's no Lysol, there's no bleach, there's nothing that can cleanse you from sin other than the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, uh, the book of Hebrews teaches us that there's no remission from sin. And I hope that you have been cleansed by the blood of Jesus Christ. I'm so thankful uh, for the blood. We used to sing uh, the, the, the old hymn, or I say old hymn, I don't guess that old, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And that blood is still as powerful today to cleanse from sin as it was the day that it flowed uh, out of our Lord and Savior's body. And I hope that God and that you will understand that God will give you more and more grace and peace in your life. Verse 3, all praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by His great mercy that we have been born again because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. We have a priceless inheritance, an inheritance that is kept not in a bank account, not in a vault, not in a safe, not buried in a, in a jar in the ground, but an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. And I hope that you have, that you live with this great expectation, the great hope uh, of the resurrection, because we haven't got that yet, so it's our hope, but it is a sure and certain hope, and I have a great expectation of that, that one day the Lord will come back, like 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 says, that we'll meet the Lord in the air, and thus go be at the Lord forever, and those that are alive and remain will meet Him, the dead in Christ will rise first, and we have that great expectation, and what a day uh, that'll be. And that is an old hymn you sing too. What a day that'll be when my Jesus uh, I shall see. Right now it's by faith, but praise God one day it's going to be by sight. And then it won't be a hope any longer. We will That hope will be fulfilled when Jesus comes back or we leave this body and go to be with Him. There's no decay, anything in that. And through your faith, God is protecting us, protecting you, protecting me by His power until we receive this salvation, which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. So, verse 6 says, So be truly glad, or some of your translations will say, You are truly glad, because that there is wonderful joy ahead. Even though, here we go, and this is what I want to kind of kind of kind of touch on tonight. Even though you have to endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show, these trials, excuse me, will show that your faith is genuine. Not a false faith, not a made-up faith, but genuine faith. It is being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor. Now notice this, maybe not right now. But on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. Brother Gary said that everybody's going to give an account. We're all going to stand before that. One day every knee will bow and tongue will confess. And I hope that you are ready to meet him. And I hope that, that your faith will bring glory and honor on the day when Jesus is revealed and comes and the whole world sees him. But here's the deal. Just because you're having a trial, I visited with a, a person today. That says, preacher, there's got to be something wrong with me because I've had this happen. That I don't know where I failed God. I don't know where I made God mad. I don't understand all this. And my first question was, as well, are you in Christ? Are you born again? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus Christ is God's son? The answer was yes uh, in that. And I, he said, there's one thing I do lack is I need to be baptized. I've not been baptized in water. Uh, we baptized him today. The tank, the horse tank sitting right outside. We're going to baptize uh, two tomorrow. Got one in the morning and one tomorrow uh, evening that's come to be baptized. Uh, and, and thankful, man, another guy called me today that was saved. We had three saved yesterday uh, on our Facebook page. Man, I'm excited. I'm fired up about that. I miss you guys. I wish I was preaching to uh, seeing uh, more faces tonight. But I'm seeing a lot of people seeing my face online, so, so praise God for that. But just because you're going through a trial does not mean that you have made God mad. Because remember, God satisfied His wrath through His Son, Jesus Christ, and by His stripes were healed. But just because you have great faith don't mean you won't go through a great trial. Go read the book of Acts and look at what 
the Apostle Paul went through. Look at what Peter and John, I just preached on that Sunday in Acts 3. They healed a crippled man. They got in trouble. They got arrested. They got threatened and all that. They just rocked on and their faith got stronger and stronger and stronger. And what better way that, that in this trial we're in now, this COVID-19 pandemic, virus, all the stuff that's going on for God's people to rise up and, and be tested as fire tests and purifies gold. And I promise you, God will be glorified. God's getting us through this. We're going to come out of it better than we've ever been. I promise you, if we'll stay with him and, and just let your faith grow. And one day, Jesus Christ will be revealed to the whole world. And here's the good news. We all get to be part of that. Amen? Amen. You love him, verse 8 says, even though you have never seen him with our physical eyes. That hasn't happened. Remember what Jesus told Thomas. As Thomas is known as Doubting Thomas. We teach that. Uh, or I was taught that as a kid. Oh, Doubting Thomas. And we, they sang songs about him. We sang his kids and stuff like that. And remember what Jesus told Thomas. He said, come here, Thomas. Come over here. Look, look, see, here we go. Touch it. But he said, you believe because you've seen. But he said, more blessed, a greater blessing will be upon those who haven't seen me, who haven't got to do like you've done, they'll be more blessed, a greater blessing, because they believe even though they haven't seen. And that's what Peter's bringing out here. You love him even though you have never actually physically seen him. Uh, talk to another young man today and uh, question a little bit about was God real? Why did God let this happen or that? And I said, well, I'm going to tell you how I know that God's real. I had all kinds of issues. I had been to doctors. I had been to psychiatrists. I had had uh, psychiatric, uh, psychiatric evaluations. They put me on medication. Nothing worked. Nothing fixed it. Nothing changed it until I completely surrendered all of that to God and I started believing God's word. I started asking and believing God that he would heal me according to his word. Uh, I allowed the Holy Spirit. Not that the Holy Spirit wasn't in me. I didn't allow the Holy Spirit to move. And when I'd done that and opened up, God could come in and took care of all those problems. So I don't care who you are, scientists, doctors, atheists, uh, Muslims, Buddhists, whatever you want to believe is fine or not believe. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is real because I know that doctors tried, science tried, medications tried to fix me and it couldn't be done. But God did it just like that. Praise God. And I promise you he'll do that for you. Uh, it doesn't matter who you are. He's no respecter of persons. He is a respecter of his word. And we need to, to believe his word, trust his word, work his word uh, in our lives. And, and I love him even though I haven't seen him, but I do know he's real through the power of the Holy Spirit that he put in me. And though you do not see him now, you trust him and you rejoice with glorious, inexpressible joy. And I get up every day with that glorious, inexpressible joy. Yeah, sometimes my back does hurt. Uh, sometimes I move a little bit slow. Sometimes uh, I'm not saying I get up and run laps around the house physically, but spiritually I do. And I, I've had a joy through all of this COVID virus. I, I don't like not being here. Uh, in here and some of the things we've had to do. But the joy of the Lord has been my strength. But like I said, we've had people saved. We've had people delivered. Uh, we've had people that were suicidal that God touched uh, through our online. So God's still working, even though we're not in here. God's still on the throne and he's still moving. I hope that you have a glorious, inexpressible joy tonight. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Think about that. We like to be rewarded. I, I, my... Uh, I've got a dog that I'm working on. I'm, I'm, I'm not a big dog trainer, but I, I've got a, a, a lab dog that I'm trying to get retrieving and coming and doing where we can hunt him uh, this fall, and he is one spastic rascal now. He has tried, tested my patience, and I mean, one day you think, man, he's got it. We've crossed the line. We're there. He's doing everything he's supposed to do, and he'll do that two or three days in a row. And then, man, I'll go to bragging on him. So, boy, you finally got it. And then, my land, it's like he's forgot who he is, what his name is, and just it, it, it's, it's like starting over again. He'll get it. He'll get there. But he likes to be rewarded. He's learned that uh, now a little bit that I, I, don't, I don't give treats because I may not always have a treat on me or a hot dog in my pocket. I teach them their name with the treat, but once I give them their name and come in, I don't, that's, that's what I do. But after that, it's a pat on the head. And he's learned now, though, that it's a lot better to get, to get a pat on the head and say, good boy, than scolded a little bit and things like that. 
But a lot of times God rewards us every day. And the true reward we're going to have, we may not get the treat that we like or want or think we deserve, but the true reward is going to be the salvation, eternal life that was bought and paid for through that precious blood of Jesus Christ. It said this salvation was something even the prophets wanted to know more about when they prophesied about this gracious salvation prepared for you. They wanted to know what was going on. They wanted to know what was up uh, with all that. Even though they was prophesying about it, they didn't understand it. They wondered what time or situation the Spirit of Christ within them was talking about. They didn't know it or understand it. They prophesied it, but still they was wondering, and what, what, how's all this going to work? When he told them, notice this, in advance, first off about Christ's suffering, and then his great glory that came after the suffering, that came afterward. Now think about that. They wondered what time or the situation that spirit that was in them was talking about. When the Spirit of God told them to write, and they wrote it down and prophesied about the crucifixion of Christ, the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. Yes, the virgin birth of Christ and all those things that was prophesied. And now, but his great glory afterward. After all these trials, now remember what Hebrews says, that we can approach the throne of grace with confidence to find help in our time of need. We must believe that God is, that He exists, that He is who He says He is, but that He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. We are going to have a great reward in heaven, but it's not like the old song, I'll fly away. Just a few more weary days of dragging, getting kicked around, beat up, and I'll get to heaven. He also, Jesus says, anyone that leaves... Houses, farms, mothers, brothers, sisters, jobs. He said, you're going to get rewarded in this age and in the age to come. So God does reward us before we get to heaven. The ultimate reward is eternal life. But we're also going to get rewarded for our sufferings, our trials, our faithfulness uh, to the Lord down here. So thank God for that. Now, they were told that their messages, notice this, that their messages were not for themselves, but for you, for us. And now this good news has been announced to you by those who preached in the power of the Holy Spirit sent from heaven. We're going to celebrate Pentecost Sunday on May 31st, the last Sunday of the month, and when the Spirit of God came and God the Father sent the Spirit to us. It is also wonderful that even the angels are eagerly watching these things happen. It was preached in the power of the Holy Spirit, sent from heaven, and angels are watching. So even though we're enduring many trials, I, I said this Sunday, there's a lot of people going through a battle of Armageddon right now. It's a spiritual battle for some, a physical battle for some. They're struggling, they're, they're fighting, they're, they're clawing, they're scratching, and all that. And they're trying to figure out how they're going to make it. Their finances, they might have lost their job uh, they might be needing a surgery and they can't get because it was deemed a non-essential. A lot of surgeries are opening back up. And I mean, all different kind of trials. It can be a spiritual trial, a physical trial. But guys, I'm here to tell you tonight, in the name of Jesus, no matter the trial, you can get through it in His name, through the power of the Spirit of God, and knowing what the Word says. Here is why so many Christians struggle you know, that they have issues, they're beat up, they're kicked around, they're stomped. That's not God's will for you, but you have to know what he says. Don't just take my word for it. Go get in your Bibles, go read your Bibles, go put that word to work, stand on that word, and God is no respecter of person. He doesn't just do it because I'm a, I'm a minister and, and that I pastor and that I preach and all that. No, he does it because I believe his word. I know what his word says, I stand on his word, and even though I'm I'm going through a trial. Some trials aren't that big a deal. Some of them are, are huge. I know. I've been through them. But I know this. God has never let me down. Every trial, every temptation, every situation that I have ever come up against, God has been right there. And the ones that I failed was not God's fault. It wasn't because he didn't do what he said. It was because I didn't do what he said. And I got off listening to somebody else, another voice, another situation, my own voice, my own way. And then, yeah, I had some difficulties in those trials. But when I trusted God, even though sometimes, I'm not going to lie to you, my flesh, it didn't make no sense. I had no idea of how it was going to work out or, or, or any of that. 
But that's what faith is. I don't know how it's going to work out. I just know it's going to work out. I know that God's will will be done. His word won't return back to him void. It will accomplish what he set for it to do. Just like when he sends the water, the snow, the rain, everything comes down. It all has its purpose. And God has a purpose with his plan. God has a purpose with his word. So I hope, I hope that as you go through these trials, you will let your faith grow you will let your faith be refined, and then you will operate in faith, and it's far more precious than mere gold. A lot of people right now in America, we're not in Oklahoma. We don't have the issues that some of the folks in California and other states are going down. I, I read an article uh, this afternoon that Governor Newsom, I believe his name is, in California, is talking about declaring martial law in some cities because people are starting to get out and they don't like and all those things like that. I don't know what will come of that. I'm not in California or anything like that. But they are having trials there. Uh, some places now, uh, the 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 uh, toilet paper is catching back up. Some places run out of. Who would have ever thought there'd been a shortage of toilet paper? I did. That still makes me chuckle uh, in that. But now, though, some places food. There's a lot of places they said next week they're going to run out of meat because of some of the packing plants and things that, that there's a shortage of beef. There's not a shortage of beef. The feedlots are full. I talked to a guy that worked in a feed yard out in western Oklahoma today. They're stacked up. They just don't have any place. They're, they're stacking them up, going process. And some people think it's a political ploy. I don't know all that, but I know it's going to be a trial because when you can't go get food, it does be, become an issue. I don't worry about that for me. I've got a lot of food walking around my house in the woods and the creeks and the ponds. I promise you I can't eat. That is one thing that we do. Now, if you're stuck in the middle of New York City or Los Angeles and you can't get out uh, in, into nature and hunt and fish and all that, I understand it's a problem. And it's a trial. But I promise you that looks bad. That looks like something that what are we going to do? God's already got it figured out. God's already got a plan. If we'll trust him through it and God's people will get together and pray and believe and read his word and worship him and praise him, we will come out better than we've ever been. I believe even though we've not been in here, our church is bigger than it's ever been. We're reaching thousands upon thousands of people uh, each week tonight or yesterday in two services, tonight in this service, Wednesday night in that service uh, and those things. So it may look bad, it may feel bad, but I promise you God's got it in his hand. And what I want to encourage you to do, to realize, as Peter said, I'm writing to God's chosen people who are living as foreigners. Look at yourself as a tourist right now. I know a lot of folks can't go on vacation. They couldn't travel. They couldn't do this. We're just passing through this earth. Our final home is not here. But while we go through here, we're going to enjoy ourselves. We're going to do what God says to do, no matter whether there's a virus, no matter whether there's a war, an earthquake, all those things are coming. But greater is he that's in us than he that's out in the world, and we're going to be fine. We're going to get through it. God's got it, and God's got this situation handled, and we're going to continue to love him. We're going to continue to praise him. And we're going to continue to do all the things that God has called us to do. So I hope that you know that you are a chosen people, a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and I'll get over into that later on uh, in, in this book, in this letter, excuse me, to that. So remember, you have an inheritance that is kept in heaven for you, pure and undefiled, beyond the reach of change and decay. It's going to be just like God said it's going to be. And I want you to be of good cheer tonight. If you're, if you're scared, if you have fear, remember God didn't give you a spirit of fear, but of love and power and self-discipline. He done that for us through his son, Jesus Christ. And even though we're going to endure some trials, remember, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus. We can take every thought captive. And I hope that you're living a life of joy. As this said, it, it's inexpressible that we, we have a glorious, inexpressible joy. And we will have that reward of our salvation when Jesus returns in that. So God bless you. Thank you for tuning in tonight. I have just I have a few announcements that I want to uh, share with you. Uh, we are we uh, last night uh, our elders and and approved and our deacons approved. Uh, we're going to bring on my son Connor Clark and Doug's daughter Amberly Hart as our uh, social media folks. You're going to see us a lot on social media. We're setting up a. a uh, uh, what do you call it? Not a studio, Doug. Uh, I guess, it, I don't know. Huh? 
a video studio. We're going to have a camera over in our other building and lights. And every day we're going to have somebody. I'm going to have Gary up here and Judy on it. We're going to have somebody every day. We're going to come in and rotate people that you're going to hear the word on our Facebook page, on YouTube, on uh uh, Snapchat, Instachat, I don't know all that stuff, TikTok, Tik, whatever all that stuff is. We're going to be on everything. If there is a social media outlet, we're going to be on it, either with, an, with, with something good about God and the stuff and from our people and from our leadership and things like that. We, we're going to do everything we can. We're blessed with, with Doug and knowing the technology. We, we've got two young people that, that know a lot about that stuff and different things, and there's no reason why we can and not going to do that. Uh, so starting June 1, you're going to see us a lot more, not just on Mondays and Wednesdays and Sundays, but every day something uh, on there. So we're excited about that with, with them coming on and able to help us uh, and do that. So uh, thank God for that because we are reaching thousands of people uh, online. And now we'll even be able to reach more and it'll be a, a where it's something without me stuttering and stammering a lot of things like I do that we can edit it and do all of that daily and man I'm excited about that and just like today you know yesterday we had three people say baptize one today going to baptize two tomorrow I uh, got more coming uh, Sunday I think to be baptized I'd have to go back and look at the date on that that the people that's coming home uh, from a job so man God's still working God's still moving God's still saving people uh, through the blood of his son and, and, and I'm so thankful that I get to be part of that so thankful for you guys that's been faithful to give Hey, even though we're not in here, hey, we still got stuff going on. The reason we're able to buy a camera, the reason we're able to buy these lights and stuff is because you guys give. So I, I, I please ask the Lord what he'd have you to give. I know things are tight. I know finances are tight right now. But remember, you reap what you sow. And if you're having a hard time financially, I promise you, sow financial seed, you'll reap financial seed. If, if you need love, sow love, you'll reap love. That, 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 that reaping and sowing deal, man, I promise you it works. I promise you it works. Get in prayer and know what it says. Get in the Word know what it says. And I am so excited about it. Now we're going to be on every aspect of, of social media. We, we've got a deal uh, working in Tulsa with the, the uh, a cable deal up there. I, I had We tried to do that last year. I've been in contact with them. I don't know how that's going to work out. Uh, still, that's still been working in progress and stuff. So, man, be in prayer for that. Uh, thank you again for giving to where we're able to do a lot of these things. And be of good cheer. Don't don't get down. Don't get down in the mouth, so to speak. Uh, just because you're going through a trial, reread this in First Peter. Check that out and know what God says. So we're again be in prayer for us as, as we prep for coming back in here in June seventh. That's just a short time away. Service uh, Wednesday night. We'll be right back in here at seven o'clock on Wednesday night for a Bible study. We'll be right back in here in First Peter. I've combined uh, those two like I did with uh, through First John. We'll be back on that Wednesday night. Uh, Sunday morning, 9 a.m. and 11 a.m., we'll be back with church in the parking lot. And then the 31st Pentecost Sunday, we'll be out there. You can bring your lawn chairs. You don't have to sit in your truck. You can bring your lawn chairs. You can hear it on the speaker and stuff like that if you want uh, and come gather. But if you have a need, if you need some food, if you need some help, if you need some, some medicine, whatever, if we can help you with us, let us know. We've been blessed that people have stepped up and, and helped with that. We, we, I took some food to some people today. Uh, we've been doing all more. So please don't go to bed hungry. I'm not saying we can supply you for six months of food, but we can get you where you won't go to bed uh, hungry and help you out. And we're here for that. If you need some clothes, you need some shoes, whatever, let us know, and, and, and we're here to help. But most importantly, if you need to know about Jesus, want to know about Jesus, need prayer, Holler at us, get on, our church phone number will be on there. It's on our Facebook page. You can message it, get a hold of us because that's the important thing is that we want you to know that there is salvation in no other name other than the name of Jesus. So God bless you. Be of good cheer. Hang in there and I'm going to close with a word of prayer. Father God, thank you for this day and I thank you for the opportunity to stand before this camera tonight for these folks that are watching and that will watch later on. That your word's going to go out there and it's going to change people's lives in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray that they'd be filled with your spirit and walk in the power of your spirit, knowing that they are, are clean, washed in the blood of Jesus. And I thank you for those that was baptized today, those that's getting baptized into Christ tomorrow, and those that's coming, Father. And help us that each day, that whatever trial comes, 
We're going to meet it in the name of Jesus. We're going to have on the full armor of God. And we're going to stand against the wiles and the schemes of the enemy. That greater is he in us than he that's in the world. And we're going to walk in the power of your word. Father, I pray for all my brothers that are preaching tonight. I got a lot of uh, brothers that's on air I know tonight that will be on Wednesday night. I pray for them and their churches as they lift up the name of Jesus that, again, that we'll all join in, in, together and realize we're all on the same team. We may be in different spots, different locales, different states, different parts of the world, but your name is going to be lifted up, the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you again for loving us. Thank you for meeting every need according to your riches and glory. That's in Christ Jesus, for it's in his name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. Have a great evening.